hello. So you have very coherent uh, results uh, from you and from uh, other teams uh, on autophagy and, uh, and aging in various ways. Uh, so uh, uh, there are two things now. One is to uh, go deeper in the mechanism and try to find something better. And another, another one is to say, well, okay, it seems to work. What should we do? What should we do now to at least uh, make something concrete for the general population uh, in a few decades? Uh, and so my question is, uh, uh, would you advise uh, if you were to propose, for example, the intervention testing program uh, to test things in mice and the lifespan? Would you advise to test uh, real menidine or something else? What would be your first choices to, to pursue the, the story of this in a very concrete uh, manner? So, my primary interest is in neurodegenerative diseases, and I think the questions you ask, I know exactly what we're doing in the lab. So, we try and find better, we want a repertoire of drugs that can do this, um, and we try to test in patients a little bit. Um, I think the question of the effects on lifespan, and I think that needs to be a whole different set of ex experiments we talk about, and I, I think they're quite important for the sophical issues about lifespan and longevity that are maybe sub going to be the subject of what happens a bit later today. But I think that um, that's also something we're trying to do. So um, in Drosophila and in C. elegans, you can manipulate autophagy genetically. And if you do that, you constitutively, you increase lifespan. Um, it's very difficult to do in mice. I don't think anybody will be able to do it successfully. We try to do various manipulations to see if we can do it cleanly, genetically. Um, we have data um, with, with the very strange Huntington allele where um, Scott Seidman was on the slide, we collaborated with us, we collaborated with them. And they developed a form of Huntington which has no glutamines in the protein. Um, and what he found was that if he, that, that mouse lives longer. And if you cross the zero glutamine allele onto a Huntington's background, you ameliorate the neurodegeneration to, to, to quite a significant extent. And we showed that the zero glutamine allele induces autophagy constitutively. So that's clearly one allele. But the problem is it's not clean. It could be doing other things. So that's the one. So I think you know, the important objective for the lab is to try to see if we can do a clean experiment in mice. We have other alleles of that type in the lab, which we are pursuing in the anti-aging context as well. Um, and, and certainly one of them, we haven't done the aging experiment yet, but we've got quite nice data in Drosophila with a range of diseases, um, and, and in, um, in Huntington's mice, showing that it ameliorates the phenotype and enhances autophagy. So, so the questions you're asking are exactly the things we're doing in the lab. Uh, just to refine just one or two words, for example, in France, there is someone working with spermidine uh, at Inter. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. Uh, it seems to be, uh, he seems to focus on autophagy and he seems to study uh, lifespan, so perhaps you're collaborating with him and seeing. I, I know he know well, we're good friends. <laughs> and then, question uh, What do you think of the calcium channel blockers? So that's sort of the next set of uh, drugs actually, that's the second highest priority um, set on the list and I think they're very promising um, I mean, we certainly, um, you know, planning to pursue particularly those that get into the brain. Um, many of them don't get into the brain, but some do get into the brain and I think they're a very promising set of candidates to, to look at. Yeah. I, I think it's worth mentioning one thing which I perhaps didn't stress. And, and, in terms of the autophagy and lifespan and treatment, is that I think we can, uh, we do give our drugs in a pulsatile fashion. So it's not that in the models we're using, at least in the mice, we, we don't think we've got constitutively upregulated autophagy. If we switch it on, clear out some of the rubbish, and then let the cells recover and switch it on again. And so it's like you're know, taking the rubbish once or twice a week rather than all the time. So I think that also might mitigate against some of the potential side effects. Um, I just wanted to ask, is it the autophagy, decline in autophagy is the cause or the more aggregation of these proteins happen in, in brains? Are you studying how to prevent the aggregation? 
So and I think the two are connected. So if you if you modulate the expression level, so if you if you do a sort of model experiment and you change the expression cell mutant antics, and you look at the percentage of cells with aggregates, it's absolutely it's remarkably linear. Um, so um, the aggregation tendency is, is a function of the, the steady state levels of the protein. And so our focus is trying to reduce both the soluble precursors um, and eventually the aggregates as a consequence. I think it gets around the whole sort of religious debate of which species are important, because you're removing all the aggregating species as from the molecular side. Um, so in that way, we're doing so by modulating autophagy. I think your question is a good one, though, because in some of these diseases, I think there's a two-pronged set of damage. I mean, you can <coughs> damage your autophagy, and you're also making aggregate pro proteins. And so um, I think by damaging autophagy, some of the side effects of that might be independent of the aggregate pro protein, some might be dependent. So, so I think you, you're autophagy.